will be just a little bit of the story, but what the big story is, is for 20 years, Derek Jeter handling the white hot spotlight of New York City and playing at a Hall of Fame level. All right, falling one vote short, we're going to give that some attention, as we should, but I absolutely agree with you, Bob. While it would have been great and appropriate for Jeter to get 100%, he gets into the Hall of Fame, and that's the big overriding story. And I look back on this as a storybook story. Here's a kid who grew up in Kalamazoo, Michigan, told everyone he was going to play for the Yankees, pinned a Yankee uniform to his bedroom wall, wore an NY necklace around his neck, and said, that's because I'm going to go play for the Yankees. How preposterous, how ridiculous is this? This is never going to happen. Not only did it happen, Flash, it happened in a way that he has a legendary Yankee career, so much so now that we're talking about him after 20 error-free seasons on and off the field in New York as a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and it happened because he had an incredible work ethic and an incredible belief in himself that he was going to be the best possible player that he can be. And I think about Derek's career, what he did on the field was everything that you would want a Yankee to be. The way he carried himself off the field, probably even more impressive on how a Yankee should carry himself in the city of New York and not getting into any trouble. But when I think of Derek as a teammate, he was not the most talented guy I have ever played with. He was the most confident player I had ever been around. When he ran out to shortstop to start every game, he believed he was the best player out on the field and he was going to find a way to beat you, and most times he did. You know, we always talk about those storybook moments, those historic moments that Jeter accomplished, and there are so many, and we'll cover those throughout the course of the show. But, Jack, one more layer to what you talked about. He wanted to be a Yankee, but he could have been drafted by the Astros, by the Reds. There was a good chance that he never would be in pinstripes and he falls to sixth. Right. The Astros had the number one pick the season that the Yankees drafted him. They actually had a scout, a former major league pitcher, Hal Newhauser, who said, pick Jeter. This is the guy you have to pick. When the Astros didn't pick him, he ended up quitting and leaving the organization. And you're right. He fell to the Yankees at the sixth pick. And then we talk about all of the glory. He's in the Hall of Fame now. He also hit about 200 in his first minor league season. He made 56 errors in his first full minor league season. I know from talking to him that there are a lot of phone calls home. There are a lot of tears. He actually called his parents once and said, I got to come home. I got to quit. I can't do this. And to play devil's advocate with him, his mother said, okay, you can come home. And then he realized what the ramifications were of that. I think it was good news for Jeter and everyone in Yankee universe. They hung around and decided to give this baseball thing a try. Yeah, just think about how far he came. And, and you think about all the championships that he won. You think about him being named the captain in 03. And there was no better leader on those teams, those championship teams. You had all the great players and the star players. But your consistent guy day in and day out was Derek Jeter playing shortstop, getting base hit after base hit. And I think most importantly, leading by example. He didn't say a whole lot. He might give you a look that says, okay, it's time to get things going. But a perfect leader, a perfect captain, and now a Hall of Fame career. For years on Yes, we chronicled what Derek Jeter did on the field. Felt like we had a front row seat. But you actually did, not only on the field, in the dugout, but in the clubhouse as well. What was that like? You know, I, I was lucky enough to compete against him for the five years before I became a Yankee in 03. And to be quite honest with you, I did not give him enough credit as an opposing player when you share a clubhouse with Derek and you watch the way he walks in every day that level of confidence how he prepares day in and day out and then the way he went out on the field every night believing we're winning this game first of all and I'm the best player out on the field second of all those things rub off on you it makes you a better player it raises your game so not only was he great he made everybody just a little bit better and I think it wasn't just the talent John the thing that stood out to me about Jeter that I think he he had more than any player I've ever covered. Maybe I'd put Mariano Rivera right up there. It was the mental toughness. Yes, he was very talented. Look at the numbers. Sixth most hits in Major League history. One of the best shortstops of all time. But I really do believe that Jeter was mentally tougher than most players. He believed in himself. He believed he was going to win. And to your point, John, David Cohn, his former teammate, also said Jeter was the best turn-the-page player he ever played with. Lose a game, 5 nothing. strike out a few times, make a couple of errors. And Jeter would walk out of the clubhouse eating an ice cream cone. He's already worried about the next game. He's not going to worry about that game. That's the key to being a, a Hall of Fame Major League player because the rest of us, when we go for 1, 0 for 2 in a game, we're thinking, I'm going to have a bad night here. I'm going to be 0 for 4. Derek Jeter never had that ability. It was pitch by pitch and that ultimate confidence that he was going to find a way to get the job done. It's just one of the those, those careers that you 
marvel at because when you looked at him and played with him every day, you're like, this guy isn't the most talented physically, but mentally he was a rock. But you know, part of getting to the Hall of Fame, Jack, is making the spectacular look simple. So you covered him for years in the press box with the Times before you joined us. You must have seen him make plays where you like, you, you thought your eyes were kidding you, and then you realized, oh wait, that's what Derek Jeter does. Yeah, there are a lot of things that Jeter did on the field that were just instinctive. And I remember when he was competing, it was the tr triumvirate of shortstops. It was A-Rod, it was Nomar, and it was Jeter. And I had a scout who said to me, listen, I think those guys are probably more talented than Jeter, especially A-Rod. But a scout said to me, Jeter's the better baseball player. He said, if you watch Jeter every day, he is the guy who's going to do more things to help you win than those other guys will.